turn to that and we'll read that. I'll be reading from King James Version or bring it up on your phone. Amen. Psalm 37 verses 1 through 11. If you can stand, please stand. This is a psalm of David. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, And the wicked shall not be, yea, they shall diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Today we want to talk about, no matter what it looks like, believe God. Father, we praise you, we thank you, we honor you, we lift you up. Have your way, God, in us, in your people, in your word. Move me out of the way so you can just come forth in the way you see fit. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. Holy Spirit, take over. Amen. God bless you. Amen. No matter what it looks like, believe, trust God. No matter what it looks like, believe, trust God. I've personally come to the conclusion that being a Christian is not for the faint of heart. Not for the one who must see everything first and then believe it and call it faith. It's not for the one who can only believe when things are going or seem to be going their way. Christianity is not for you because it does not work that way. To be a Christian, you must have faith in God. You must be committed and have courage to live on in spite of what it may often look like. You do not have to deny what's going on. You just not you you don't have to be destroyed or distracted by what's going on. The word of God is full of assurances for the believer because sometimes it appears that though though that evil is winning. It, it appears that evil is triumphant and the bad guys are getting over. So many scriptures where the Bible says they get not strange when fiery trials come upon you. Very present help in the time of trouble. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou shalt fear no evil. But thou shalt have no evil fall upon me. Thou preparest a table before me, the presence of my enemies. I will keep him in perfect peace of mind and stay. And we can go on and on and on. You've seen those books, the promises to the believers. But for some reason, when it looks like the bad guys are winning, when it looks like things aren't going our way, we get distracted. 
Ever since I became a Christian, my life seemed to be worse off and not better. Anybody ever say that? Before I joined that church? Before I said yes to the Lord? It's funny because when that happens to you, you think there's something wrong with the church you join. And then you go join another church. And you find out it's not the church. You find out that now you're in spiritual warfare. That the enemy that we used to serve no longer wants us to be able to serve the God that we now serve. And the enemy just unleashes all kinds of stuff in our lives, trying to get us to turn around. Because at least the enemy has enough sense to know that what we have now is better than what we had with him. At least the enemy knows. We don't know that, but the enemy knows that. The enemy is not dumb. The enemy says, they got God. And I don't want them to have God. Because we had a lot of fun together. Therefore, I'm going to let everything, I'm going to throw everything in that I can so I can get them to turn back to me. So if I can get them to not trust the church and not trust pastors, if I can get them to get in there and say, I don't like this person, I don't like that person, you got to wear a hat in this church, you got to give up your, your whole check in this church and all that. If I can get them to start talking about the church, just lies, don't care if they lies or not, then I can pull them back to where I want them so I can continue to mess up their lives. Somehow in the midst of what it seems like, the believer must go over and over in his or her mind and know the love, mercy, grace, and promises of God. you got to stop sometime when we see stuff, when stuff comes to us. you got to tell yourself, no, no, I don't do that anymore. No, that's not the way I think. you got to renew your mind. No, I'm going with God all the way. Amen. So you, we got to get to the point. you got to grow in Christ and say, you know what? I don't like what's happening. I don't understand what's happening. As a matter of fact, it's painful. As a matter of fact, I, I'm so sick and tired of it, but I'm going with God. You have to make up in your mind that you're going to stay with God no matter what. Somehow the midst of living in a world that seems like wrong is right. When it seems like when it's time to elect a president. That all we can do is talk about one another and not the issues. That's some sad stuff going on. The believer must keep the focus and trust God for a lifetime and not just for a moment. Evil is for a moment. The blessings of God are for a lifetime. My commentary says that the evil person may have all the stuff they have for a lifetime, but it's not eternity. Whenever you look at someone and you feel they're better off than you and they're not a Christian, then there's something wrong with you. Because they're not better off than you. You have become materialistic instead of spiritual. You have to be very, very careful with that. Because, see, see what happens is if I get sick, my new 2015 Ultima can't heal me. I can lay all on it. <laughs> lay down in it, prostrate. You got to know what you signed up for. A lot of us can't stand stuff. Stuff starts jumping off. We get scared. Oh. Because, see, what happened in the world when stuff jumped off, we used to call our homies and homegirls. But see, when stuff jumps off in the spiritual realm, you call on the name of the Lord. And then you have to pull back because he says, vengeance is mine. He says, let me fight this thing. And a lot of, a lot of us, we don't want God to fight because God sometimes won't let you see no blood. You know, and guts. You, you know, God, God won't punch him like you'll punch him because Behind your fist is the force I never liked you anyway, you know. But God gets in and he gently sometimes dismantles that person or he changes us in the process and gets us to witness to the person that we were ready to tear their head off. See, we don't like the way God fights. We don't like that. The Christian life is a challenge, but it is possible to win. But you got to live the life according to the Bible. Amen. That's the part we don't like. We got to live it according to the scriptures. Co Pastor said in the altar prayer, you got to have knowledge, learn of me. See, my people are destroyed for a lack of We know about everything else except God. We know about everything else about the Bible. You can talk to folks, they know about science, they know about quantum physics, they know about medicine, they know about so much stuff, but they don't know about God. And matter of fact, I watch Jeopardy a lot, and when they have a, a biblical category up there, some of them folks don't know what they're talking about. He was born a Mary. Lamb. Mary had a little lamb.
His face was white as snow. You got to keep your focus. Because stuff will come at you. Yes, it will. Stuff will come. And people will come at you. And your family will come at you. And your job will come at you. And you will even come after yourself if you're not careful. Anybody ever stop one day and say, what am I tripping for? You ever been tripping? Not you. Not you. Now, I know you don't trip. You don't, you don't trip. You don't trip, man. But, uh... You ever trip yourself out? Some folks don't want to admit it. Sometimes you have to laugh. So I call my wife. She be cracking. My, my wife loves to laugh. You give her a good joke, you done. She laughs so hard, you like, wait a minute now, you get mad. <laughs> she won't stop. Wait, 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 wait. Ain't that funny, baby. Hold up. Yeah. It seems that Psalm 37 was an attempt to address the challenges of being a believer and waiting on God while living in a world of evil and darkness that appears to be doing better than you are, better than we are. But like evil got everything. They don't get, like they don't get no diseases. Seem like they don't get any, we're going to turn that off. Seems like we don't get any cancer. And, amen, whatever it is, turn it off. Amen. Because believe it, you know, we, 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 we're waiting on God and, and it's a world of evil out there. And, and, and you working hard. Anybody go to work every day? You've been working 25, 30 years. And the people next door, you don't work nowhere. And they got everything off your tax dollar. Oh, I wish I had a witness there. See, some, it's your tax money. That's why you got a right to get an attitude. Your, your tax money. See, people that work, they put time, you know, get the month, they get unemployment. But people that never work, yeah, they never work. You grew up with them, they never worked. And they got everything. As soon as you go to work, they got your TV, they in your house. I remember I lived up in Germantown around Shelton and McMahon, and the people next door, these young boys, they ain't never do nothing. But you could, you could smell the incense and the reefer coming through the wall. One day I came home, they had broken in. And um, it was deep because they had stuff stacked up. They had stuff stacked up right at the door. But when you call the cops, guess what the cop told me? Do you have the serial numbers off your system, because you know if they made one, they made two. I said, man, leave. They don't want me to handle it, but they weren't going to handle it. But see, you got to understand that, 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 that the evil in the world don't care nothing about you. They will smile in your face and tear your back out. But will you, my brother and sister in Christ, to smile in my face and tear the back out? Now, I got an issue with that. I want to know what Bible you read. I want to know what Bible study you go. I want to know what Jesus you serve. I want to know. And then I want to know that, you know, and sometimes, you know, we have to have the ability to take responsibility for what we do. You ever met somebody, somebody always doing something to them, they never done nothing to nobody? They're perfect. They're perfect. Anybody ever met anybody perfect? They never did anything to anyone. They don't believe what goes around, come around, but they don't do nothing wrong. Anybody know about go around, come around? You did something to somebody, all of a sudden they did something to you? I learned a long time ago not to take something that don't belong to you. I was on the bus, on the number seven bus, and I think it was called Atlantic Thrift Stores. I went down there for something. Yeah, and they gave me too much change. I was like, yeah, yeah. Sat down on the bus and broke my bush comb. You had the bush comb in your pocket. Had to take a little extra two dollars. I did have a fro, believe it or not. I know it's light, but it's right. I had a fro and a blowout. And a tangerine leather with tangerine high heel shoes. <laughs> Talk about chef, you blank right. Don't ask my wife because she cannot find those pictures. <laughs> but Psalm 37 reminded me of, of the stuff we go through, the stuff we see. 
You know, Proverbs 3, 5 and 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct that. Sometimes when stuff starts jumping off in your life, and things aren't working out right, and the money's short and everything, and you look next door to the folks, they ain't doing right, they ain't living right, they ain't serving nobody, look like they got everything, but it's for a moment. And you got stuff for eternity. You're building eternity. They build them momentarily. David's trying to tell us from his viewpoint and from his experience. That's why David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken of seed begging bread. And see, we need to learn how to wait on the Lord. And see, and just because he doesn't do it doesn't mean he can't do it. Sometimes God will heal somebody, won't heal the other. Sometimes he will let somebody live, won't let somebody else live. But it's not because he doesn't like us. That's because he decided to do something differently. It don't mean he can't. Just because he does not mean he can't. You got to understand who God is. God can do anything he wants to do. But David tells us in Psalm 37 certain things he doesn't want us to do, to do and not to do. Number one, fret not. In other words, David is saying, don't be angry. Don't be aroused with burn with anger, rage, or jealousy, or compete with the evildoers. Fret not thyself, because don't lose sleep. Don't be hating on them. As a matter of fact, try to witness to them so they can get saved. And when he says, you know, when he says that the evil won't be, you know, for a while, they'll be cut off, that's on God's timing. That's God's clock. It's not your clock. Don't be up there praying, Lord, cut them, Lord. Cut them off. Cut them off of the knees, Lord. Cut them. Cut them. I need to see you cut them. When I come home from work, I want to see them all short. <laughs> Fret not thyself. Don't get all upset and bent out of shape. Come on. God's blessing them. And God's not blessing. No, God's blessing you because you know what's right. And you know who to believe in. And you know who you worship. And you know who to go to when you need a healing prayer. When you need a prayer deliverance. They got to go to things. And you go to God. Then it says, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, which means don't be provoked to jealousy. Don't sit there mad. Don't waste your time being mad. And you, you got to struggle, and you got to really put it in your mind. you got to keep your focus. Going. It's hard, especially on a hot summer day. You come home, you got the buses all hot and everything, and they sitting out there drinking coolers, <laughs> sipping on lemonade, and you come walking in your crib. And sometimes they're on your steps. That I hit, I hit somebody. Somebody said, "Woo!" and won't move and let you in. Give you a little bit of space. David said, "Don't just pray for him. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Because no matter what it looks like, you still got to believe God. Ain't that something? You can't halfway pay your bills. They out there just throwing money away." Got the, the the next what the next level television got the greatest cars and all kinds of stuff, and you go, you leave your house in the morning they sleep, <laughs> they house is shut down. You try to get to sleep at night they up all night. <laughs> well, you know Mr. Carpenter don't mind. Yes, Mr. Carpenter does mind, but Mr. Carpenter is a Christian and he don't know how to come out there and tell y'all in a nice way to shut it down. So. He just don't let y'all do what y'all do. But fret not thyself and be not envious. And then, and then David goes on to say, in verse 2, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green earth. me, as the green earth. You've got to have patience to wait for God to do what God does. And can't nobody do it like God. Once you get experience in, with the Lord, you will find out God will deal with folk in a way that you can never deal with them. Can't nobody do it like God. Have you ever had situations come up and you say, Lord, this person just, they say one more thing. They say, and then all of a sudden, God just take care of the whole situation. Not only did he get them out of, your, out of your way, they actually moved. You came home and the moving truck was there. And you try to be a good Christian, but you were in your house and you said, hallelujah. You start jumping around and praising the Lord and you turn your lawn and add up the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. You think they can't hear you through those sin walls? They heard you. <laughs> but in verse 3, David tells us to trust 
in the Lord. That means rely on for confidence and be secure in him. Whatever God promised you, you've got to know he's promised it unto you. And those that live around you, those that do evil, those that try to come against you, cannot take what God promised you. So he says, trust in the Lord and do good. That's another part we don't like, and do good. He's like, I don't mind trusting in the Lord, but do good. That messes you up sometimes. And he said, if you do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. He said, as long as you do good, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to prosper within your own right. I'm going to take care of you. You're going to be taken care of. I'm going to take care of you. As a matter of fact, what he's trying to say, the evil that's coming against you, the evil that lives next to you, cannot take what I have for you. See, when they steal our furniture and our electronics, they haven't stole our God. They haven't stole our witness. They haven't stole our faith. They haven't stole our relationship. It's, 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 it's not good. It's bad. It's messed up. It shouldn't happen that way. But God is saying you've got to keep your focus sometimes because I can give you more than that. And they're not even saved. That's what your heart really should be. Wow, Lord, I wish they were saved. See if I can't get a word in, you know. Sometimes you might have to go to the barbecue. You don't want to go. Sharifa don't want to go. She looking at me like, please don't make me go to the barbecue. I don't like those people. Please. <laughs> then David tells us to delight thyself also in the Lord, which means enjoy. As a matter of fact, that word in Hebrew means mock the Lord. Like you like the Lord God so much that you're going to be like him, mock him. Like you like the way somebody dresses or what they wear, then you're going to go buy what they have. It says delight in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord, have delight in serving the Lord in spite of what you see. It looked like you're losing, but you're still winning. It's according to which game you're watching. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. If you want the same thing that the wicked people want, something wrong. He said he shall give you the desires of your heart. See, no matter what it looks like, you still got to trust God. And then he says, then David says, commit. Commit thy way unto the Lord in verse 5. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. That means to turn, that, that word means to turn over. A figure of rolling care or responsibility over to the Lord. That's awesome. You took all your care and response, and you rolled it over. You gave it to the Lord. That's when you commit your way. Lord, I can't worry about it. Lord, I don't understand, but I'm giving it to you, and I'm trusting you, God. Whatever you tell me to do, God, I'm going to do it. Sometimes it may not make sense to me, but you're talking about stuff on a spiritual level, not a natural level. Then I'm going to commit my way unto you. I'm rolling over my response. I'm rolling over my life. I'm giving you free reign in my life. That's why some of us struggle sometimes, but we can't commit to anything. We say a whole lot of stuff out of here, but when it comes time to come forth, ain't happening. Ain't happening. So we need to make sure that this lines up with what we're really going to do. I often ask myself, why do people say they're going to do stuff that they know they ain't going to do? Nobody forced you. Nobody put a gun on you. Why? You know you're not. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Wow. So whatever you committed to him, whatever you trusted him for, he's going to bring it to pass. In his time, you got to learn how to wait. A lot of us don't want to wait. We have to learn how to wait. And I think in Philadelphia what's happened is uh, Seth messed us up on that waiting. We used to be able to wait, but the bus don't come. It messed our waiting up. And then we get to church, we don't want to wait because we waited for the bus. So, you know, we, it messed our waiting up. We don't want to wait. You got to learn how to wait on the law. Waiting for that check. Wait, never mind. Commit thy way unto the Lord, and trust also he shall bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as a light, and thy judgment as a noonday. And he's saying that because I love you, because I'm in you, because I'm going to show them who you really are. They're going to see you for who you are. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to show them, not you. You don't have to walk around with the, the evildoers. You got to walk around there with your big cross on. And the big family Bible, I talk about it all the time. You ain't carrying your little Bible. You got the family Bible off the coffee table. The family, the family Bible with all the liturgy in there. Everybody, boy, whatever. You got that. And you walk around the neighborhood. <laughs> talking about all these sinners. Until you found out someone was related to you. It's a small world. Keep on digging. Everybody related. The people you're talking about, they might be related to you. Do you know that?
Look at verse 7. David says, rest in the Lord. That means keep quiet, be silent, hold your peace, stand still, tarry, cease from worrying. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Sometimes we say that sometimes. God, I can't believe it. I can't, God, I can't believe it. I've been working hard and you let them get blessed. Don't be ashamed. We all think like that sometimes. You working your fingers down to the bone. Come on, God. Stop with all that. Come on. But he says, guess what? Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself. We have to understand that since God is with us, since God is in our lives, the Holy Spirit, that whatever God promises is going to come to pass in God's time when God gives it to us. But that's the focus you got to keep. You can't, we can't go back and forth. Some people go back and forth. I'm in church. I'm not in church. I love the Lord. I don't love the Lord. I love the Lord when it's going okay. I don't love him when it's not going okay. I love the Lord when I got a job. I don't love when I don't have a job. I love the Lord when I got money. I don't love when I don't have money. I love the Lord when I got a boo. I don't love the Lord when I don't have a boo. Boo, boo, boo. You got to be consistent and you got to be committed. And you can't let folk throw you off your focus. You can't let people throw you off. You know, you can't, you can't let church, church folk throw you off. If God called you to him, don't let folk throw you off. You, got, you ain't come to worship them. You ain't come to worship me. If you did, I feel sorry for you. I ain't got nothing for you but the word. And I ain't dying on the cross for you. I love you. I love you. But don't stick nothing to me talking about the blood came straight. No, I'm going to get mad if I fight you. You stick me. The blood came straight. Come on. <laughs> then in verse 8, David instructs us, cease from anger. Leave it alone, abandon, withdraw. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Because sometimes you can get so upset and so mad with what you're trying to do for the Lord and look like they're getting over. Sometimes you just begin to tear down some stuff on your own. You begin to speak on certain things. He said, no, no, cease from anger. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Be chilly for a minute. Threat not thyself in any wise to do evil. Because I'm going to take care of the evildoers. The evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And not this old earth, the new earth David is talking about. Something worth inheriting. And the evil ones cannot inherit what you're about to get. They are not entitled to the same things you're entitled to. And see, we have to understand, you got a peace that passes all understanding. They walk around looking behind their back everywhere they go. They can't be at ease. You got a joy that is unspeakable. If you take all this stuff, they're not happy no more because they don't have no inner joy. They got happiness, but they don't have any joy. You got to understand that you are on the winning team. You got a better life than they will ever have. You want to wake up in eternity one day, and they're going to wake up in eternal damnation one day. That's why David said, fret not thyself. In the Old Testament, in the biblical, ever since man was born, man had a problem on deal with God. I'm waiting on you. But look at this mess over here. God, why I got the Volkswagen and they got the Mercedes? God said, because they both can get you to the game on time. Four wheels of gas and a driving wheel. <laughs> Cease from all that stuff. Because he says, for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, they shall diligently consider this place and shall not be. So you're going to come to a point in time, you're going to look for where they used to be, where they used to hang out, the stuff they used to do, and it won't be. God said, just that quick. I'll wipe it out. Just that quick. You just keep your focus on me and wait on me. Hear me. Understand what I, the Lord God, am telling you. Don't go, don't go there. That's not your battle. You no longer live in that area. I delivered you from that. So don't go back over there. And just because you're no longer there don't mean you're better than them. You better be careful. Don't go on the enemy's playground. It's by the enemy's rules. Amen? And co-pastor told somebody a couple weeks ago, 
We live in enemy's territory. Do you understand? We live in, that's why so much stuff jumps off. We are saved people living in enemy's territory because when Adam and Eve transgressed in the garden, they gave the dominion to this world back over to the enemy. And God sent Jesus Christ, Genesis 3.15, to promise him to come to us to redeem us from this mess. And the new world has not been set up yet, nor is Satan finished yet. Therefore, we're living in enemy's territory. That's where the spiritual warfare comes from. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to pray. That's why he doesn't want you to come to church. That's why when you come to church and you want to hear the word of God, he won't let you hear the word of God. Because before you can hear the word of God, somebody done rubbed you the wrong way. But before you can hear the word of God, somebody said something foul to you. Because before you hear the word of God, somebody said something about your wife. Before you... You've got to be able to keep your focus. Because say, okay. I came here to hear the word of God. I went through a whole lot just to get here. And now I can't even hear the word of God because I let somebody get all up in my spirit. Do you remember when you went to school, they say, see you at 3.30? I ain't trying to start now, but somebody messaged you in church and say, see you at the Benedict. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. See you at the Benediction. You see somebody running to the altar at the Benediction, you know what happened. They done messed with somebody and they said, you know what, I don't think I want to deal with that. I didn't know they had 15 other family members with them here. I thought I was just messing with them, you know. Sometimes they start calling all the family members up. But you have to be focused. And you've got to know when the enemy's trying to prevent you. And sometimes you've got to press your way. Sometimes you really have to press your way. We were worried about, oh, I wore this last week. Nobody even know you were here last week. Nobody you look good to you. You look good to everybody. Everybody was like, I couldn't even hear past day. You look so good. <laughs> Get over yourself. Come on. But David said, no matter what it looks like, you got to believe God. You got to trust God. See some all this stuff. And look at verse 10. He says, for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, they shall diligently consider this place, and it shall not be. Then verse 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And then you go back up to verse 9, for even though it shall be cut off, but those that wait, those that have patience, those that hope in the Lord, those that look for his return, those that tarry upon him, those that wait upon him, those that believe the word of God, those that stand in the word of God, those that pray the word of God, those that look for God for their blessings, those that look for God for their every air that they breathe, those are the people. you got to keep your focus. Because a lot of stuff will jump off. And it'll make us say, this ain't worth it. I ain't serving God no more. See, like the more, the harder I try, the worse it gets. That's the trick of the enemy. Because the Bible tells us to renew our minds so that when things begin to happen, God, what is it that you're trying to tell me? God, what is you trying to do in my life? God, this is painful. And God does not mind you and I being real with him. He can handle it. God, I don't understand. It. God, this is painful. God, what are you trying to teach me? But God, I know one thing. Since you never leave me nor forsake me, I'm not going to forsake you and not, I'm not going to leave you because when I count it all up, the stuff you've already done in my life is greater than all the stuff that you have to be able to talk to yourself. A lot of us talk, encourage yourself. Talk to yourself. You might be down and out. Take responsibility for what you did. Why are you down and out? Why did you lose that job? Why did you lose that marriage? Why did you lose that friend? Why did you lose your house? you got to be honest with yourself. It ain't always a devil. Sometimes it's us. And until we get to the point where we can look in the mirror and say, I help this. I caused this. I let the devil in. I opened the door. I slept this one. I kept messing with this. I kept abusing this. I kept taking advantage of this. I didn't, I didn't take him. I didn't bless my wife. I didn't bless my kids. I used them. I took advantage of them. I didn't bless the church. I used the church. I didn't bless the pastors. I used it. I used it. Until we take responsibility for our own mess. Stop blaming the devil. Blame so much on the devil and it's us. If the devil had a chance to come and they said, I ain't do that. I ain't do that. Pass the card, you just let me say one thing. You know, you don't let the devil speak in church. He said, just one thing, and I'll leave. Hey, I, I ain't do that. <laughs> no. Hey, and the devil, that was good, but I ain't thinking that was. <laughs> they saw that that one themselves. I never, I never, I, all the stuff I've done, I ain't thinking that one. They got good.
Learn how to laugh at yourself. Learn how to see where you messed up. And pray about that thing. Stop, stop putting it on other folks. Stop projecting it. Stop it. Their fault. Their fault. I found out about five years ago, it's not so much about right and wrong. It's about getting the enemy out. If I'm talking to my wife, it's not so much about me being right, she being wrong. It's like, let's get the enemy out. So we join forces and get the enemy out. Because it's not important who's right and wrong. It's getting the enemy out. If you're not struggling with our relationship, let's get the enemy out. Who's the one around? I was right. You were wrong. That does not help. Because every time the situation comes, every time you think about it, one was right. Well, that's, not, that's not a union. Those are two sides coming together. That's, that's, that's Bush and Trump. You know, it's... Even pray about this whole presidency. God got, I'm so glad God got the, they used to sing song, he got the whole world in his hand. And that's so true because this stuff is a mess. But if you and I, if my wife and I are going to go against each other, the enemy will come in. Not only tear up our house and our marriage, tear up the church. Because we got to come here together. And I'm not good at being phony. If she ain't right, if she ain't right, sit over there until you get right. <laughs> But don't let stuff roll you over. Keep your focus. And tell yourself the truth. If you mess up, I mean, you know, to err is human. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake. Stop trying to cover up. That is a big mountain of mess. Try to get rid of your stuff as soon as you go. Try to talk it out. Communicate. Don't holler. You ain't got to holler. Just talk. I ran into people that think if they raise their voice, that means they're right. See, I used to sing, and they, tra- and they trained me how to project my voice. I-, I could take this microphone off, and they could hear me across the street. But I might have to sing later on for Valentine's Day, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> At a club near you? No, just kidding. Um, don't get frustrated with God or with your life. If you do, don't stay there, because no matter what it looks like, and sometimes, you know, we say, God, what are you doing? But don't say, God has forgotten about you. God don't love me. That's very dangerous. That's what the enemy wants you to say. No, God loves you. And even though you may not understand what you're going through, God loves you. If he didn't love you, then what was the whole idea about him sending Jesus? He drew, God drew first blood. Before I, I was even, even looked like something that could be saved, God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross to redeem me if I so desired it. So while I was in my filthiness, he still saw some treasure in my trash. Don't tell me God does not love me. You never died for me. You didn't care anything about me. He had to begin to understand. And then, you know, Isaiah picked it up like this. Isaiah says this. Turn to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. We're just going to just close out and leave it alone. Look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Because no matter what it looks like, you've got to trust God, you've got to believe God. And you might be going through some rough time. I'm not trying to discount that. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just trying to say just brush it off. No, you're going through some rough time, but God is still with you. I don't, see, he never left me. He's never forsaken me. Sometimes I thought he wasn't there, but he said, you move, not me. Cause I'm, I'm everywhere. I am everywhere. Look at Isaiah chapter 40. Look at verse 28. Hast thou not known? That's for those that are on the brink of throwing in the towel. Some folk get their point to in the towel. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. That's why you got old the saints, see the saints talking about, for God I'll live. 
and for God I'll die because they've been through something and they know something and you can't make them doubt God. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait, they that wait upon the Lord, Shall renew their strength. We found out in Bible study, it's like you go into the Burger King window and you say, Lord, take my weakness and give me your strength. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. No matter what it looks like, trust God. No matter what it looks like. You ever read Hebrews chapter 11? The roll call of faith. They did not even have Jesus in the flesh yet. But because of they believed God for the promise, they went on and did the things they had to do. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that believe, those that seek him must believe that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. No matter what it looks like, continue to seek God. Don't get caught up in the hype. Don't fall for it. There are many people that have lots of money, entertainers, sports figures, and they live the most miserable life. If you look on that channel, what's it called? Unsung. They got stories about these people been in groups. These people, they have all this money. They got all these houses and everything, and they are miserable. They're going to see psychologists and psychiatrists. They're taking drugs. They're taking all kinds of stuff. They're alcoholics. They're drug addicts, but they got all this money. They got all these cars. They got all these clothes. They don't have no friends. They don't have no peace that pass up all of this standing. They don't have no joy that is unspeakable. But those are things we desire. But not if you belong to the Lord. Desire those things that God would want you to have. The believer who is committed and faithful must keep their eyes, their minds and their hearts focused on him. That's why the Bible says renew your mind. It's a spiritual thing going on. It's not natural. You've got to focus on the promises and the power of God no matter what happens in your life. And you can get some bad news sometimes, but God is still God. Bad news does not change who God is. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus gives us an example of no matter what it looks like, believe in God. Jesus does not make it look easy, but Jesus does show us that it is possible to hold on in spite of. Matthew 26, and we're closing out. Matthew 26 and 36. If believe it or not, Jesus is having a hard time. Because as one preacher said this morning, when he came in the flesh, he decided not to take advantage of his deity. He decided to leave that alone. So everything he went through is real for him. It's very real. So when he gets to the Garden of Gethsemane, he's on his way to the cross. That thing got real. Fret not thyself, Jesus, for evildoers, for they shall soon be cut off. Verse 36, then come of Jesus, put them into a place called Gethsemane, save unto the disciples. Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Tell yourself the truth. Tell God what you feel like you're going through, but God will never leave you nor forsake you. Sometimes you've got to stay in your prayer closet long enough to get an answer. Amen. Stop going in there delivering what you want and then leaving. God may want to say something to you. Verse 39, and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. If you can get to your nevertheless, then you already got the victory. You're not looking for victory. You're working from your victory. But sometimes your victory got to kick in. Amen. That's what I like about that old, that old ultimate we had. We had this button on there. That bad boy would kick in. I just, sometimes I just press it. <laughs> I was on express, but I just press it. You just kick in just like that. I said, wow, that's, a, that's all right. I like that. But sometimes you need your victory to kick in. But it wouldn't kick in if I wasn't going a certain mile per hour. See, if you don't stay in the prayer closet long enough, you got to have a garden to get something where you can go to, where you can talk to God long enough where your victory can kick in. Because as soon as he said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy, thy want me to do, then he got his strength. And he said, come on, boys. Come on. They're coming to get me. 
I got to go to Calvary. This is what I came to do. Don't you know as, as you're on the journey, there's some stuff you came to do, God has called you to do, that you're going to have to go through some tough times? But every now and then you got to stop by your garden, get sitting there, and get that nevertheless, not as I will, but thy will. And then you got your victory. You can kick it through. You can go ahead. Come on, y'all. We might as well face this. We might as well go. They came and got him. And then he went to Calvary. And then I think Reverend Rob was saying in, in the morning prayer about the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love that story. You know why? So he said, Nebuchadnezzar, guess what? We respect you as king. But you can put us in the furnace. They said, I'll tell you one thing. I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to trust God. And what they're basically saying is, if God does not deliver me or not, he's still God. And what they said to Nebuchadnezzar was, I know he can, but if he doesn't, he's still God. He said, no matter what you do to me, no matter how hot the furnace is, I can't deny God. There's no other help that I know. He's the only one that can deliver me from this. And if he doesn't, I still love him. I still know him. I still got my eternal life. If he doesn't raise me up off the sick bed, I still got what, prom- what God promised me. That's what they were saying. They weren't trying to be smart. They were young men. You know, they were young. They were in their teens or early 20s. And they weren't trying to be smart. They weren't trying to defy the government. They weren't trying to defy the political system at the time. They said, I, I need you to understand something, Nebuchadnezzar, because, because I'm here. I can't do everything y'all do. I can't worship what you told me to worship. But if you want to put me in the furnace, I need to let you know something, that, that if you do, I, I'm not going to change my mind. I don't care if the people put me in there do get burned up and consumed by the fire that's supposed to burn up and consume me. I, I'm not going to change my mind. This is where I stand. This is what I know. This is all I know. No, I know God. That's all I can tell you. Do what you need to do. You can't take my eternal life. Do what you need to do. That's all right with me. But see, when they, when they put him in the fire, somebody met him in there. I need to let somebody know that I don't know what you're going through, but God's about ready to meet you in the situation that you don't want to go through. Go ahead in there. Go ahead. Tell Nebuchadnezzar, go ahead. I got God. I have God. I have God with me. I got God on my side. It looks real scary, and I feel the heat from the furnace. But I'll tell you one thing, Nebuchadnezzar, I respect you as the king. In Babylon, but guess what? You're not my king. I know the king of kings. I know the Lord of lords. I can't, I, can't, I can't release it like that. I can't just do him like that. I can't throw him to the side like that because you heated the furnace seven times hotter. He's been with me all my life. Ever since I said yes to him, he's been with me. I can't just ditch him. I, I got people. You know, people ditch you as friends sometimes. They don't want to hang around with you, but no, I can't ditch God like that. He's been good to me. He's been better to me than I've ever been to myself. He's been my wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's, he's He's my king and king, my Lord. He's, he's, he's my everything. He's my doctor in a sick room. He's my lawyer. He's my, he my mama, my mama pastor. He's my mama, my daddy. He's my dad. Oh, come on, you don't understand. Nebuchadnezzar, I don't care. I don't care what you do. I can't denounce my God. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. They shall soon be cut off. And they're not cut off right now before you get in the fire. They'll be cut off later. But don't be surprised who you might find in the fire. Jesus was not outside the furnace. He was in it. He's not outside your mess you're going through. He might be right in your mess. So when you step in it, he's there to help you. Let us all stand.